Most players have the best intentions when trying to pick up Jinx. Not only is she the most iconic ADC in the game, but she has by far one of the highest carry potentials of the entire league roster due to her hyperscaling nature. It's clear why she's so popular, but unfortunately when new players try to pick her up, they just end up getting their whole teams killed from incompetence. Not to worry though, in this guide, we'll cover everything from playstyle, power spikes, tips and tricks, and how to itemize so that you never throw another mission or game again. Let's get into it. Starting with playstyle, let's look at the lane phase. Obviously, you can use a ton of different strategies as an ADC when it comes to winning lane, but what Jinx prefers to do during this time is to spam shove the wave into her opponent's tower. Reliable wave clear is generally one of the things that you look for in a strong laning phase in any role, and Jinx brings plenty of that. During the early game when they lack attack speed and damage, most ADCs have to expend mana if they want to push waves quickly, and this is precisely where Jinx has the edge. Thanks to her Q's passive attack speed while she is using her minigun, she has a wave clear advantage over every ADC since she can just auto attack more than them. Ideally, you should be non-stop auto attacking the wave to keep your passive stacked to spam shove. But if your opponents try to contest the push against you, don't be afraid to use some mana with your rockets to deny them any possibility of taking control of the wave from you. After the lane phase is over, you have just one goal in mind, farm. You're a hyperscaling champion and you should be trying to acquire every resource on the map to get to your items as quickly as possible. But this doesn't mean that you don't have any pressure. Although you're not actively looking for fights as Jinx, by simply pressuring lanes and towers, you're forcing the enemy team to respond to you. It sounds silly, but by avoiding fights and just pushing lanes, you'll actually be a part of a lot of the action if you do so properly, since you'll always be forcing someone to defend versus you. And of course, all of this is in an effort to get strong enough to team fight with your team. Once you're at two to three items, you generally just want to group up with your teammates around objectives and look to demolish the enemy team. You bring some of the highest DPS in the game, and as long as you stay alive and just hit whatever you can in team fights, you'll be winning games in no time. All right, now let's talk about power spikes. There are two big ones that you'll want to keep in mind. First up is once you get your tier two boots in lane. This may not seem like a big deal, but due to Jinx's extended auto attack range with her Q's rockets, once you have the mobility from tier two boots, you're able to trade far more effectively. At this point, you should be looking to weave in and out with your range advantage to get free trades against your opponents, making you quite a competent lane bully. Not only that, but as we said, your main goal in lane is to shove waves constantly. Having that extra bit of movement speed to be able to reposition makes it much easier to avoid ganks. And as any other ADC, your biggest spike comes at around two completed items. This is when you'll have more than enough DPS to take down anyone you come in contact with and when you can start grouping to win teamfights. Now, unfortunately, Jinx doesn't have any fancy combos to pull off, but there is still plenty of skill expression to be had through her kit in general. First, you should know that your ultimate's damage scales based off of how far it travels but the max damage distance isn't as long as you'd think it would be with a global. To get the maximum damage possible from your ultimate, you just need to be at the max range of your W. Going past this range won't give you any damage increase, and that is definitely very important to know when you're looking to execute people. Speaking of maximizing your damage, as with most characters, you'll generally want to be weaving your abilities in between auto attack cooldowns during fights. What this means is that if you're in auto range of your opponents, then you'll want to auto, use an ability, auto, then use an ability. This maximizes DPS by not wasting auto attack CDs while you're casting your alt and W. And the final thing in regards to getting optimal DPS is to just remember that you should always switch to your minigun if your opponents are in range for it, as it does a significantly larger amount of single target DPS than your rockets do. As for your E, Keep in mind that your flame chompers have an arm time, which makes them quite hard to land on your own. Generally, you'd prefer to pick Jinx with a support with some amount of CC so that you can E while your target is already locked down so that it's guaranteed to land. Do keep in mind though that this won't work with certain champions. For example, Pantheon's stun is incredibly short. If you try to cast your E off of it, your opponents could probably easily get out before the chompers go off. If you're aware that you have teammates with very short CC, then you'll need to throw out your E as more of a prediction than a reaction to the CC. 
So right before you think your teammate is about to go in and land some crowd control, throw your E. That way, it will give your chompers ample time to arm and get a nice CC chain going. But of course, you're not always going to have a teammate with CC around you for your chompers. In this case, what we would recommend is that if you're around dangerous melee champions, just place them on the ground and walk on top of them. Remember that melee champions are, well, melee. They have to get close to hit you. So as long as you stand on top of your E, then they have to walk on top of it to get to you, which could buy you the time that you need to kill them or simply get away. And finally, one of the biggest tips that we can possibly give you for Jinx is on how to more consistently hit those cross map ultimates to potentially score some kills. Keep in mind that it's inherently risky to go for these kinds of plays because if you use it to snipe someone and you miss, then you're going to be down an important cooldown for when you actually fight someone. But either way, this next bit will make your accuracy shoot through the roof, so listen up. Before shooting your ultimate, always think about the angle that you're shooting from and how much room it gives for your opponents to randomly dodge it. For example, let's say during the lane phase that you see a low health target across the map. The problem with ulting from lane to lane is that there's so much horizontal movement available for your opponents. They could be anywhere in this area by the time that your rocket actually gets here. But if you happen to be in your base, then throwing it to a lane is actually far more consistent. There's a lot less area that your opponents are likely to be in, which will increase the likelihood of you landing your rocket significantly. On the flip side, if you're in base and throw it to one of these corridor jungle fights, then you're very unlikely to land a shot. Meanwhile, if you happen to be in lane, then it's the perfect time to shoot at one of these narrow passages for an easy kill. Basically, you need to consider how likely your ultimate is to land based on where you're at and where the fight that you're watching is taking place. It's an important cooldown that you don't want to waste, so this is an important skill that you'll want to practice. But you know it isn't a wasteful way to use your ultimate that pro players all use? Well, just like any other global spell, you shouldn't be afraid to use it to cancel your opponent's base timings. Denying a good recall timing is a great way to earn a lead over your opponents in lane. As we can see, by doing so, this Jinx was able to get turret plates for free before Misfortune returned to lane because of how much time she wasted. Not only that, but it will take your opponents so long to get back to lane that your ultimate CD will be coming up shortly by the time that they do anyway, making it an easy investment to make. Alright everyone, let's wrap things up with how you're going to want to build. Jinx will want to run this skill order and rune setup in most of her games. But the big thing that a lot of Jinx players mess up has to do with her itemization. By far the biggest mistake that we see with Jinx's in her build has got to be over prioritizing Rune and Hurricane as an item. When players pick Jinx, they tunnel vision on the fantasy of massive splash damage with her rockets. Don't get us wrong, when it works, it works, but it is highly unrealistic that your opponents are ever standing like this. If they are ever slightly separated from each other, then the whole point of Runans goes out the window like her relationship with Vi. So if you're against a ton of bruiser and tanks on the enemy team that are likely to clump up in fights, Runans is definitely a fine option. But those types of team compositions don't happen all the time. Against more realistic enemy teams that you'll be facing, they'll generally be playing a mix of melee and ranged champions that are more likely to all be slightly separated. In those cases, you should be going another zeal item for better efficiency. There is one niche situation where you may want to swap over to runans though. If your base is getting completely overrun by the enemy team, then building it just to wave clear massive amounts of super minions can be clutch in some games. Again, a super rare situation, but good to be aware of. Otherwise though, how Jinx builds is relatively simple. You build crit items and have a few situational options based on the games that you find yourself in. There is nothing complex about it at all. Now, what you find here on YouTube is just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to unlock your true potential, then you need to dive into skillcap.com. We have the largest catalog of League of Legends guides in the entire world, with over 1,500 guides and 350 unique courses. You get brand new guides every week exclusive to our website, along with our Smurf commentaries where our challenger experts walk you through how to carry out of the exact rank you're stuck in. Still unsure? Well, you can have all your questions answered by those same challenger experts. Need one-on-one -on -one coaching? We got you covered with hand-picked coaches trained to the highest standard. Don't have time for that? Use Direct Pro, pick a past game you played, and within 24 hours get a personalized video from a top 100 challenger player breaking down exactly what you can do better. The best part? All of this comes with a rank improvement guarantee. 
If you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using Skillcapped, you can claim a refund, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Head to skillcapped.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. All right, everyone, that is absolutely everything you need to know for how to start playing Jinx and dominating with her in your games. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.